Hi, my name is Dave Ferguson, and as a lead pastor of Community Christian Church, I want to be the first to welcome you to Community Online. I'm here to let you know that myself and our staff, we'd love the opportunity to care for you and equip you on your spiritual journey, no matter where you're joining us from. And we can do that through our locations in Chicagoland, and we can also do that online. But to do that, we have to know each other. So, if you're new to Community, welcome. We're thrilled you're joining us. The best way for you to let us know you're here is by checking in. So take a moment and use your camera app to scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the chat and a member of our team will connect with you this week. Let's get to know each other. Check in so we can learn your name, reach out to you in the next couple of days. One of the ways that we care for you is by praying for you. Don't go through stuff on your own. Reach out for prayer at any time by texting PRAY to 331 226 1686 or by clicking on the prayer button. Our prayer team is standing by and they would love to pray for you. As your pastor, if there's anything that I can do to help you grow spiritually or take your next steps here at Community, I'd like to encourage you to reach out directly to me. That's my email. It'll come straight to me. I told you, I really want to get to know you. Here at Community, we are passionate about helping you find your way back to God. And today's experience is designed to do just that. So let's do that right now together. Oh, I believe it. Your eyes will see the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Don't let your hope rest on anything less than glory to the Lord. Hey, He is your home. Come on and feel alone. There's bread instead of stone. Yeah.
Hello, community, and welcome to Community Online. We're so glad you're here. Can you do me a favor and check in with us using our community app or by scanning the QR code on the screen? As you know, we primarily communicate with each other via digital means, email, social media, text messages, phone, and video calls. And so checking in a community is a great way for us to stay connected here. We want to help you take your next step in your relationship with God, the church, and the world. So check in, create your community account, and begin accessing everything the community has to offer to help you find your way back to God. And if you're new, check in gives us the opportunity to learn your name for the first time and welcome you to community. Fill out the quick form and somebody from our team will follow up with you this week. So let's all take a moment right now, or if you're watching on your phone, take a moment right after the service to check in. If you've been around here for a very long time, you know that we are passionate about helping people find their way back to God. And we believe the best way we can live out that mission is to be a blessing through what we call the blessed practices. I want to ask you for a favor today. Once you check in, you'll receive an email, and in that email is a survey about the blessed practices. We're always looking for ways to better serve you and to help you live on mission. And the information we receive from this survey will help inform the next year of content here at Community. So would you take a few minutes to fill out that survey over the next couple of days? It's only six questions, and we'd be extremely grateful. In a few minutes, Co-founding pastor John Ferguson is going to bring us the first message in our new series called The Holy Spirit. But before we get to the message, let's take a moment to give back to God. It's our generosity during this moment that makes everything God is doing in and through our church possible. Our giving honors God and demonstrates our commitment to partner with Him in His mission. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. So I want to encourage you right now to join us in this act of worship, to cheerfully give and honor God with your tithes and offerings. You can give and set up your recurring gift through the community app or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686 or by scanning the QR code below. You can also send a check to our mailing address in Naperville. And as we give, let's hear from our friends at Living Undivided for this week's Be the Church moment. Hello, my name is Vivian Foster and I attend Community Christian Church. And we're here tonight with the undivided course. And so many times you hear people saying, you know, let's make this world a better place. Well, how do you make it a better place? But by getting in and working with those that are serious about living undivided. You don't want to miss the next time living undivided comes to a neighborhood near you. It's awesome. We can all make this work. The Holy Spirit is a person, just the same as you're a person. He has will, and he has intelligence, and he has feeling, and he has knowledge, and sympathy, and ability to love, and see, and think, and hear, and speak, and desire, and grieve, and rejoice. He is a person, this Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I'll send him unto you. And the most important thing in the world is, that this blessed Holy Spirit is now present here in this church tonight. Today, we want to start with a question. If you could hear from anyone, dead or alive, who would you want to hear from? Think about that for a moment. The answer to that question, you know, might depend on your profession or your personal story. Uh, for example, if you are in the tech world, you might want to hear from Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. If you're into sports, it might be Michael Jordan or Tom Brady. But for many of us, that person might be a loved one who is no longer with us. You know, I have a grandfather who's a sort of legendary figure in my life. Uh, he's my mom's dad, and he died when I was just 13 years old. 
But there have been many times over the years when I wish I could tap into just some of his incredible wisdom and insight. Uh, we came across a story recently, an amazing story along these lines. Uh, the story is about a woman named Amanda Lamond. And for the longest time, Amanda didn't have much of her mother to hold on to. Uh, sadly, her mom died from bone cancer 23 years ago in Washington State. All she has left from her mom is the stuffed animal bunny that she gave her one Easter when she was a little girl, and she wouldn't give that up for the world. After my mom passed away, Amanda said, I was shipped all over the country from Washington State to Texas, to Louisiana, to Texas, back to Washington, back to Texas, in and out of foster care. Uh, hard to imagine how a little girl like that wouldn't feel lost. But 23 years after her mother's death, Amanda received a package in the mail from the executor of her mother's estate. The executor who lives in California recently moved and came across boxes belonging to Amanda's mother. And inside those boxes were letters, photos, and mementos from her childhood, even her original birth certificate. Uh, one letter was written just weeks before her mom passed away. And it read like this. Dear Amanda, you know, I really miss you and not being able to get up with you every single day. Well, honey, try to keep smiling and always be brave. It was a connection to her mom that Amanda never thought she'd have. Now, we love stories like this because they give us tremendous hope. I mean, can you imagine after so many years getting to hear from someone that important to you? So what if I told you that the God of the universe, the creator of everything there is, really wants to communicate with you? You see, here's the truth. God is always speaking. Yeah, throughout scripture, we see him speaking to his people. Uh, listen to what the author of Hebrews tells us. Uh, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. Yes, see, God has always communicated with his people. In the beginning, God spoke directly to Adam and Eve. They would hear from God, just like you and I might hear from a friend. After, even after sin fractured that relationship between God and people, God chose prophets like Samuel and Isaiah and Jeremiah who spoke to the people on God's behalf. And then when Jesus came to earth, God spoke to his people through his life and teachings. And just before Jesus was crucified, he talks to his closest followers and makes this declaration that was really hard for them to comprehend. He said, very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Here, Jesus tells his closest followers that he will soon leave, but they will not be left alone. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come and God will continue to speak to them through the Spirit. So don't miss this, okay? God has always communicated with his people. I love how professor and theologian Henry Nouwen puts it. God speaks to us not only once in a while, but always. God speaks to us not only once in a while, but always. God speaks to us through his spirit. But who is this mysterious being called the Holy Spirit? Well, over the next four weeks, we're gonna talk about the Holy Spirit and the role the Spirit wants to play in our lives. And to make sure we're on the same page, let me remind you, okay, the Holy Spirit is not an it, a force, a dove, or some kind of fire. The Holy Spirit is a person. And not just any person. The Spirit is a, a divine person who has the attributes of God. Why? Well, because the Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit was present at the beginning of creation. The writer of Genesis depicts the Spirit as hovering over the waters. But after Jesus' death and resurrection, the Spirit came to be present with us in a whole new way. Uh, Pastor and author Henry Blackaby reminds us, from the time of Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit actually came, it was a celebration. From that time to the present, God has been speaking to his people by the Holy Spirit. And I know sometimes we might think that God only speaks to people who are, you know, spiritual giants, people like Mother Teresa, the Pope, or my mom, Pat Ferguson. <laughs> but the good news is, see, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is available to all of us. In fact, if you are a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is in you. Paul, in his letter to Christ followers in Corinth, writes, 
uh, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit resides there. The Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. Because the Spirit takes residence in us and is present with us all the time, God can communicate with us at any time. The question is, are we open to hearing from the Spirit? Are we open to hearing from the Spirit? You know, it kind of reminds me of when my kids were little and they would cry out in the middle of the night when they were scared, needed to go to the bathroom or simply wanted to be reassured that we were there. For some reason, I almost never heard them cry, but my wife, Lisa, always did. She had a listening or ear for their voices that I just didn't seem to have, or to be honest, I was probably just too lazy to get my butt out of bed. Not advocating for myself at all. <laughs> my point is that in the same way Lisa had a listening for and a sensitivity to the cries of our children, we've got to listen to and be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. On several occasions, Jesus reminded his followers that the Spirit would come and speak to us if we will listen. And what will the Spirit say? Well, John, one of Jesus' closest followers, recorded these profound instructions from Jesus regarding what the Holy Spirit will say to us. And, and we're going to take a deep dive into these words, okay? It starts like this. Jesus said, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, okay, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as the helper, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now, here Jesus describes one way the Spirit will speak. The Spirit will tell us what is wrong. The Spirit will tell us what's wrong. Uh, ever had that experience where uh, maybe you're reading some scripture and, and you come across a story or a verse and, and you feel just convicted that something you're doing or thinking or involved in just isn't quite right? Or, or maybe you've been in a, a conversation with someone and even as you're talking, uh, something inside of you starts to tell you that what you're talking about or how you're talking about what you're talking about just isn't really okay. Ever had that happen? That's the Holy Spirit telling you that something is wrong. But that's not all. Okay, Jesus continued in the same section of scripture, and he said this, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Here's another way the Holy Spirit will speak. He will not only tell us what's wrong, he will tell us what's right, what's good, what's true. Jesus says here, he will guide you into all truth. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you needed some guidance? You had some options, maybe some choices to make. And I mean, more than anything, you wanted to know the truth. You, you desperately desired to know what was best. You see, Jesus says the Spirit will tell you what is right because he's actually speaking on behalf of Jesus himself. In other words, through the Spirit, we have direct access to the authority and truth of Jesus. Okay, so the Holy Spirit will tell us what's wrong, what's right. And then finally, Jesus says this. Stay with me in this one. He will glorify me. Okay, Jesus is speaking. So he says, the Holy Spirit will glorify me for he, the Holy Spirit, will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine, the Holy Spirit will take of mine, Jesus says, and declare it to you, to us. Uh, Jesus says here that the Holy Spirit will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will, will point people to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will declare to us all that is his and all that is the fathers. Now think about that, okay? The Holy Spirit will point us to God and to Jesus and remind us that no matter how difficult your day or month or life may be, you will ultimately be victorious. You will win because of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Now that's some great news. You see, Jesus is telling us that the Holy Spirit will remind us who won. I mean, even in our most difficult and trying moments, the Holy Spirit is here with us to remind us of the bigger picture that in Jesus, we will ultimately overcome. 
All right, so if that's what the Holy Spirit will say, how does the Holy Spirit actually tell us these things? I mean, have you ever received a phone call or a text message from the Holy Spirit? Mm, probably not. I'd be a little suspicious if my caller ID said God, G-O-D. And yet, God is speaking. I love knowing that God is always speaking. So let's talk about how the Holy Spirit speaks, okay? All right, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through Scripture. And one way to listen for this more intentionally is through something called Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina, which is an ancient practice from the monastic Christian tradition where you read a passage slowly, several times, inviting the Spirit to speak to you. You know, sometimes we don't hear from the Spirit through Scripture because, I mean, we read too fast or we skim over a section. And, and in doing so, we miss out on something new God may want to say to us, even through a very familiar Scripture. Another way the Spirit speaks to us is through our circumstances. These may be situations that some might think are, you know, just coincidence, but actually may be a way the Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention. Maybe you asked for a sign and then you see or hear something that is personally meaningful to you. It could be during a time of discouragement and unexpectedly a friend shows up or, you know, texts you just to let you know he or she cares. Just this week, during some quiet time with God, I was, I was trying to remember a specific scripture that I've read many times before about being still with God. And for some reason, I just couldn't bring it to mind. I couldn't find it. But I still felt like the Holy Spirit was wanting me to reflect on that particular scripture. So I, I gave it some thought, but for the life of me, I couldn't bring it to mind. And so I went on with my regular devotional readings, one of which is the Community Daily. I opened up that email, and this was the verse of the day. Yeah, be still and know that I am God. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that through those circumstances and that scripture, the Holy Spirit was telling me to simply slow down, sit still, be with me. So I did. Now, I know sometimes it can be hard to know for sure that a message is from God. And so it's also to good to, to hear from the Spirit through other people, the church. Uh, as a teaching pastor, I pray every week that the Spirit will speak through our teaching. But we can also hear from God through the people in our small group or other Christian mentors and friends. I mean, sometimes other Christ followers will, will challenge or confirm something we thought was from God. So God speaks through Scripture, circumstances, other people. And in another way, God speaks to us is through prayer. Uh, most of us know that in prayer we can talk to God, right? But did you know that in prayer, you can actually hear from God? Uh, some people describe this as having a, a strong impression or, or something coming to mind as you pray. Other people describe a voice that speaks internally. Now, either way, remembering that prayer is not just us speaking to God, but God speaking to us is an important way to hear from God. Now, for some of us, I, I know this idea that God wants to speak to us through the Holy Spirit is very, very new. Maybe you feel like you've never heard from the Spirit. You may even doubt that you ever will. Either way, here's my ask. Will you simply be open to God speaking? Uh, would you be open to God speaking to you? I I'm gonna lead us through a guided time of listening prayer. So I invite you to close your eyes. Uh, take a deep breath, bow your head if it helps remove distractions. and. Uh, let's enter right now into a time of reflection. Okay? Ready? All right, here we go. Remember, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through Scripture. So, listen as I read these words from the Apostle Paul. What might the Spirit want to say to you through this passage? Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? <laughs> no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What might the Spirit be saying to you through those words?
The Holy Spirit also speaks to us through circumstances. So right now, think of a situation in your life that has been on your mind a lot lately. You have one in mind? Uh, whether it be a, a challenging situation or a, a very good one, what might God want you to see in it? What might he be saying to you through that situation, that circumstance? Reflect on that for just a moment. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through other people. Uh, right now, ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind something someone said to you recently. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was someone in your small group. Maybe it was something you even heard today. What might God be saying to you through that person's words? Finally, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through prayer. Yes, prayer is about talking to God, but remember, it's also about pausing and listening. So let's just pause and quietly listen for a moment. What thoughts did God perhaps bring to mind in that quiet space? What might he want you to know or understand? I'm gonna give you a few more moments to talk to God and listen for God. And then at any time during this next song, we invite you to receive communion. And as you do, remember Christ's ultimate sacrifice, the bread that represents his body and the cup that represents his blood. For the 21 days of prayer and fasting, I chose to fast from social media. During this time, I had an unexpected job opportunity come up. When situations like this have come up in the past, I've often prayed about it and consulted family and friends, but I found it hard to find clarity in making a decision. In this case, because the external voices of social media were dialed way down in my life, I was able to hear so much more clearly from the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke to me through scripture and through prayer, giving me guidance for this specific situation. And without the static of the outside world, I was able to make a decision that I knew was in line with God's plan for my life. I initially prayed to the Holy Spirit to place on my heart the direction that He wanted me to go. And what I discerned from that was I needed to pray for families who were worried and concerned and they didn't know what to do because they had a loved one who was struggling. Each week, I had a family come up and ask for prayer, and they indeed had a loved one who was struggling. I feel that by being obedient to the Holy Spirit, I was able to connect with families, to pray for them, to offer them support and resources. Prayer is powerful. During my 21 days of prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to me through scripture from Matthew 8. I just had a pretty tough day at work and the question Jesus asked was, why am I so afraid? Even the winds and waves obey him. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that I was afraid of displeasing people at work and I felt called and challenged to have a little more faith in Jesus for it is in him that I can find courage and freedom. During my 21 days of prayer and fasting, I've been working on prayer. The Holy Spirit has been reminding me that I don't have to have some long and drawn out speech, some fancy words on an index card. I can just, all I have to do is, even if I'm driving in the car, I can pray. I can pray in the grocery store. I can pray at work. I can pray on break. I can pray anywhere. All I have to do is speak from my heart and speak from my heart and the Lord will hear me. Heaven 
his holy courage just a breath away we've only seen in measures glimpses of your face but right here in this moment everything could change so open I think most of us know Martin Luther King Jr. for racial justice and nonviolent resistance. However, we may not be as familiar with King's deep, deep faith. In his book, Welcoming Justice, Charles Marsh describes one of King's most profound encounters with Jesus. In January 1956, Martin Luther King Jr. returned home around midnight after a long day of meetings. His wife and daughter were already in bed, and King was eager to join them, but a threatening call, the kind of call he was getting as many as 40 times a day, interrupted his much-needed rest. When he tried to go back to sleep, he just couldn't shake the menacing voice that kept repeating those hateful words in his head. 
And so King got up, made a pot of coffee, and sat down at his kitchen table with his head buried in his hands. He cried out to God. And there in his kitchen, in the middle of the night, when he didn't know where else to turn, King met the living Christ in an experience that would carry him through the remainder of his life. He later recalled that moment with these words. I heard the voice of Jesus saying still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. He promised never to leave me. No, never alone. In the stillness of that Alabama night, the voice of Jesus proved more convincing than the threatening voice of an anonymous caller. And the voice of Jesus gave him the courage to press through the tumultuous year of 1956 to the victorious end of the Montgomery bus boycott. And even more than that, it gave him a vision for ministry that would drive him for the rest of his life. I don't have to tell you that we have so many voices trying to tell us what's right, what's wrong, and who is going to win. I mean, imagine if Dr. King would have given more attention to the threatening voice of racists than to the calming voice of the Holy Spirit. Just think what might have been lost and how history may have played out. It just makes me want to ask you the very question we began with today. Who do you really want to hear from? Who do you really want to hear from? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that uh, you continue to speak to us through your Holy Spirit and you tell us what's right, what's wrong, who's won, that we will ultimately be victorious. God, help us to take the time to listen to you, to hear from you. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. What a powerful start to our series. John's message reminded me that the Holy Spirit is present and active in our lives, wanting to communicate with us, with you, every day. Perhaps we could challenge one another to begin every day with a simple prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us through Scripture, other Christ followers, our circumstances, and prayer. Would you be willing to do that? Maybe even before your feet hit the floor in the morning, say a simple prayer. Speak to me, Lord. I am listening. I wonder what we might hear if we live with that kind of attentiveness. I'm so glad we were able to spend this time together. One last thing. Don't forget to check in if you haven't yet and check your email to take the Blessed Practices survey. It's just a few minutes to fill that out. Thanks in advance. Have a great day and we'll see you right back here next week as we continue in our series, The Holy Spirit on Community Online. I'm so glad you joined us today, and I pray that God met you in a meaningful and powerful way. If you're new, remember to check in so we can connect with you. You've already taken your first step, and we want to help you figure out what's next. Everything you need to take your next steps here at Community can be found at communitychristian.info. We would love to help you connect through a small group or by joining a team. We have in-person and online options for both, or if you found your way back to God, we'd love to help you take your next step and get baptized. Don't hesitate. Take the next step, and we'll see you right back here next week for Community Online.